In this video, I'll discuss 8th Exchange Trade Funds or ETFs that pay out monthly dividends. Number 1. The Invesco S&P 500 High Dividend Low Volatility ETF or SPHD. SPHD looks for stocks that pay high dividends and offer low volatility. This fund invests 90% of its assets in the common stocks of companies listed in the S&P 500 Low Volatility High Dividend Index, making it attractive for income-seeking investors who are also risk adverse. SPHD's net assets are $2.88 billion with an expense ratio of 0.30%. The inception date of this fund is October 18th, 2012. Its current dividend yield is 4.56%. The current price is $41.96. And the 52-week range is between $37.19 and $44.98. This fund is concentrated in real estate, consumer defensives, utilities, healthcare, and others you can see in this sector waiting breakdown. The top 10 holdings for SPHD include Verizon, AT&T, Simon Property Group, Prudential Financial and others seen here. One con of SPHD is that it is limited to stocks in the S&P 500, which may reduce diversification benefits and opportunity for higher returns from smaller companies outside of the index. The second monthly paying dividend ETF I want to discuss is the Global X Super Fund ETF or SDIV. The SDIV fund tracks an index of 100 equally weighted companies that rank among the highest dividend payers around the world. This can help diversify both geographically and with interest rate exposure. SDIV's net assets are $738.72 million. It has an expense ratio of 0.58%. The inception date of this fund is June 8, 2011. The dividend yield is an eye-popping 12.17%. The current price is $20.99, with a 52-week range between $20.06 and $25.15. SDIV includes investments that must combine top returns with lower-than-average volatility to be included in this index. The fund has made monthly dividend distributions for more than nine years straight. SDIV is concentrated in real estate, basic materials, energy, and industrials. Here are SDIV's top 10 holdings by market cap, which include companies such as Orient Overseas International, Ready Capital Corp, Yankel Australia Limited, PCCW, and others seen here. Something to consider before investing in SDIV, high yields often come with higher risk, including exposure to less stable companies and markets potentially leading to greater volatility and loss of capital. All right, here's ETF number three, which is the Global X Super Dividend US ETF or DIV. DIV focuses on a basket of low volatility, high yielding securities. The objective of this fund is to track the performance of 50 equally weighted common stocks, MLPs at REITs within the United States. Securities listed in this ETF are among the highest yielding in the United States, and they have lower relative volatility than the market. DIV pairs very nicely with SDIV for investors who want a truly global grip on high-yielding equities. DIV's net assets are $598.75 million, with an expense ratio of 0.45%. The inception date of this fund is March 11th, 2013, and has a current dividend yield of 7.23%. Current price is $16.78, has a 52-week price range between $15.32 and $19.08. And DIV's top sectors that invest in are energy, real estate, consumer defensives, and industrials. The top 10 holdings in DIV include companies like Iron Mountain Incorporated, International Business Machines Corporation, Global Partners LP, AbbVie, and Cognet Communications, among others. The fourth ETF I want to discuss is the Wisdom Tree US High Dividend Fund, or DHS. DHS mimics the Wisdom Tree High Dividend Index, a fundamentally weighted index that features company ranked by dividend yield with average daily trading volumes of at least 200 million. DHS net assets are 1.07 billion, has a current expense ratio of 0.38%, and its inception date was June 16, 2006. Current dividend yield is 4.35%. Current price is $81.78, with a 52-week price range between $73.48 and $88.45. The fund's holdings are well diversified among sectors such as financial services, energy, utilities, consumer defensives, healthcare, and others. The top 10 holdings include AbbVie, ExxonMobil, Chevron, Altria, Philip Morris, Morgan Stanley, UPS, and others you can see here. The fifth ETF I'd like to discuss is the Invesco Preferred ETF, or PGX. PGX is another preferred stock ETF that delivers on yield. PGX's objective is to replicate the performance and yield of the ICE BOF AML Core Plus Fixed Rate Preferred Securities Index. Its portfolio holds more than 200 stocks with a heavy weighting toward the financial sector. PGX has net assets of $4.51 billion with an expense ratio of 0.50%, which is on the higher end of expense ratios that I am willing to pay. The inception date of this fund is January 31st, 2008, has a current dividend yield of 6.2%, 
Its current price is $11.80, and the 52-week price range is between $10.14 and $12.44. As I already mentioned, the bulk of PGX's investments are in the financial sector and include companies like Citigroup, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, AT&T, and Bank of America. A con for PGX is the concentration in financial institutions can lead to sector-specific risks with much less diversification than many other ETFs on this list. All right, ETF number six is the Invesco KBW High Dividend Yield Financial ETF, or KBWD. Based on one of the prestigious Keith Brayette and Woods NASDAQ indexes, the KBWD fund is heavily weighted at least 90% toward publicly held financial companies, which should perform better in a rising interest rate environment. KBWD has net assets of $372.57 million. Its expense ratio is 2.02%. I had to double check that because it's very high, by far the highest on this list. Has the inception date of December 2nd, 2010, with a dividend yield of 11.77%. Current price is $15.10, and the 52-week price range is between $13.04 and $17.03. KBWD sector weighting is almost exclusively in financial services and real estate. And the holdings include Orchid Island Capital, B. Riley Financial, Armor Residential REIT, AGNC Investment Trust, Dynex Capital, and others seen here. A con for KBWD is also that it is very sector specific with financials and real estate making this ETF vulnerable to changes in interest rates and economic cycles. Number seven, the iShares Preferred and Income Securities ETF or PFF. PFF is a viable alternative for investors seeking high yields. PFF mirrors the performance and yield of the S&P U.S. Preferred Stock Index. PFF's net assets are $14.14 billion with an expense ratio of 0.46%. The inception date of this fund is March 26, 2007, has a current dividend yield of 6.47%. Current price is $31.89 and its 52-week price range is between $28.15 and $33.10. PFF is heavily weighted towards financial institutions, industrials, and utilities. This ETF can be sensitive to interest rate changes, potentially leading to significant price volatility in rising rate markets. Some of the main holdings in this fund include BlackRock, J.P. Morgan Chase, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, Next Era Energy, AT&T, among others. All right, we've made to number eight. The eighth ETF I'd like to talk about is the SPDR Dow Jones Industrial ETF Trust, or DIA. DIA does not offer the highest yield, but investors who prefer some capital appreciation potential with their income might find its portfolio attractive. It was launched in January of 1998, which makes it one of the oldest ETFs still standing. DIA has net assets of $1.07 billion with an expense ratio of 0.38%. Its dividend yield is 4.35% and its current price is $81.78. And its 52 week price range is between $73.48 and $88.45. DIA is one of the few ETFs to directly track the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's composed of 30 of the bluest blue chip companies. And it contains stocks across various sectors, including financial services, healthcare, technology, industrials, and other sectors. Its holdings include Goldman Sachs, Caterpillar, Visa, United Health Group, Home Depot, McDonald's, and Salesforce, among many others. A con of DIA is that it is limited to only 30 stocks, which may not provide as much diversification as other ETFs that cover broader market indices. So why not just pick the highest dividend and invest there? While the allure of high dividends is strong, it's crucial to remember that investing solely based on dividend yield can be misleading. High dividends might not always signal financial stability or growth potential, and in some cases, they might even indicate a company is struggling to sustain its payout. Diversification, understanding the underlying assets, and considering factors such as volatility, sector exposure, and the economic cycle are important. Ultimately, the key to successful investing in dividend ETFs lies in a balanced approach that weighs both the reward and the risk, ensuring that your portfolio is well positioned to achieve your long-term financial goals. Just want to remind you all that I'm not a financial advisor and none of this should be taken as financial advice. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. And if you're not sure what to watch next, check out this video right here that YouTube is recommending. I think you'll really enjoy it. Take care and I'll see you next time.